we look at artwork and see the finished product, what the artist wanted us to see and admire, but there's so much more hiding behind it, or should I say, beneath the paint. With technology like x-rays or infrared scans, we're able to see so much more of what goes into creating a masterpiece. It's helped with understanding painting techniques, the artist's creative process, determining the condition of paintings, gaining information on the supports, and so much more. They've even been instrumental in proving certain paintings were forgeries. X-rays can reveal certain things about a painting, like the underdrawing, alterations, and repairs, while infrared scans can provide more information that an X-ray might not pick up. Like the different paint layers, for example. The carbon, or pencil, drawing lines are clearly visible using infrared, giving us a good look at the sketch the artist made before applying the paint onto the canvas. We can see items that were painted out or added in, as well as any damages and repairs and restorations. And sometimes an entirely different painting is discovered underneath. So this technology helps shed a light on the history of a painting. X-rays were first discovered in 1895 by German physicists, while infrared reflectography was developed in the late 1960s. This new technique quickly became recognized as a way to study artwork, and by 1896, a professor from Frankfurt had produced a successful X-ray of a painting. In 1924, the Bavarian State Painting Collections in Munich became the first museum to install an X-ray machine. Soon after, X-raying paintings would become a standard procedure. Even up until today, X-raying remains a routine and fundamental part of painting conservation. So first of all, X-rays are a form of electromagnetic radiation located on the electromagnetic spectrum beyond visible and ultraviolet light. Because of their high energy and short wavelengths, X-rays can pass through most solid objects. As they pass through the painting, different materials block the pathway, depending on the chemical composition of the materials and their thickness. Pigments composed of materials with high atomic atomic numbers will block x-rays and the radiographic image will appear light. When x-rays pass more easily through the layers of a painting, the x-rays will register dark in the x-ray film. Because of this, not all materials appear the same and some materials may not register at all. For example, areas containing elements such as lead block x-rays and appear white, while areas composed of carbon and other light elements allow x-rays to pass through, which results in dark areas on the image. Infrared light is also typically more responsive to black pigments. Now let's take a look at some paintings to see what all was observed when using these techniques. In this painting by Agnolo Bronzino of Cosimo de' Medici as Orpheus from 1537, they were able to determine he was initially partially clothed in animal fur and later reworked into full nudity. If it wasn't for these scans, the pentimenti would have remained hidden by the final smooth renderings of the painting. When there are multiple, almost identical copies of a painting, the one displaying evidence of pentimenti is typically the original rather than the copy. Take these portraits of Cosimo that Bronzino and his workshop were required to make for distribution to Cosimo's political patrons. The original includes the pentimenti as Bronzino perfected the portrait that would later be reproduced multiple times by his workshop using a cartoon to trace the design directly onto another panel. With the use of x-ray fluorescence, they were able to determine elements present in the pigments. We can see in the imaging that the panel included mercury, which is present in the red pigment vermilion, copper, which is related to the green pigment, tin, which correlates with the use of lead tin yellow, iron, present in ochres, and manganese in the use of umber. It can also detect the trace elements presented in these pigments derived from mineral deposits. The brighter areas correspond to a higher concentration of a specific element and its associated pigment and show the application of painted details and the brushwork on the painting. The XRF mercury map indicates the use of vermilion pigment used for the flesh tone, the reflections of the armor, as well as its velvet lining. The copper map identifying the copper-based azurite pigment used for the green curtain background shows a discontinuity of the brush strokes across the lines, and the background appears to have been painted in two separate stages, inside and outside the inscribed lines. Our next painting is a very popular painting by Jan van Eyck, created in 1434, the Arnolfini portrait, which has been scanned twice before. The infrared scans revealed quite a few alterations, so let's take a look at some of them and compare them to the final portrait. Starting with Arnolfini himself, we can immediately see changes in his face and hat. First, drawn with his eyes higher up, as well as his nose and mouth, his hands clearly show redrawings as do his feet. 
there are three distinct versions of his feet. While we're taking a look at his feet, you may spot a surprising find. There are no underdrawings found for the dog or the chandelier for that matter. It's usual to not find underdrawings for smaller items or certain details, but the fact that there were none for the dog and the chandelier was a bit more surprising to researchers. His wife also has quite a few changes, just not as many as him. Her eyes were drawn lower and with her gaze towards her husband, and the changes to her eyes were probably done later during the creation process, as there are no drawings of the painted eyes. Her left hand was first angled differently and then changed to a less awkward position. Another significant change was the mirror in the background, first drawn larger and with eight segments. Before we get into the next painting, I just want to remind you that you can follow me over on Instagram at History by Linny. I not only post about fashion, life, and art from the Middle Ages and the Renaissance period, but I also post about beautiful historic locations that I visit, and I think you guys will enjoy it, especially if you enjoy my content here. So I hope to see you guys there. Now let's get on to the next painting. The Annunciation painted by Jus van Cleve in 1525, the infrared scans give an incredible look at the extensive charcoal underdrawing. He sketched all the important contours, objects, and architectural details, but the faces show very little underdrawing compared to the rest of the work. We can determine that the sketch was done by freehand, and you can see hatch marks were used to indicate shading, some being more controlled, while in other areas showing signs of rapid movements of the hand. Being able to examine the underdrawings makes it easier to determine whether the work belongs to an artist by being able to match up the style to other works they've created. As we look at the image in infrared, you probably notice this dark area on Mary's blue robe. In the x-ray scan, you can see that a repair has been made to the panel after suffering some kind of damage. A wooden insert has been added and the jagged edge at the top gives us an indication that the damage was most likely done by the painting coming in contact with an object rather than a purposefully made cut or replacement. Sometimes, while scanning paintings, they discover something other than the artist's drawings and techniques. They may find work by different artists, and this is because it was not common for an artist to reuse a canvas, especially when the painting was no longer needed. Take these for example. A 16th century painting of the beheading of John the Baptist was being x-rayed to find a cause for the deterioration of the painting. To the conservator's surprise, a nativity scene was found, and gold leaf is even seen present around the baby's head. While not the easiest to spot, it's been marked out here. This portrait of Queen Elizabeth I, painted in the 1580s by an unknown artist, shows an unfinished painting of a woman underneath. The identity of the woman is unknown, and while some believe that it may be Anne Boleyn, it's most likely not, for several reasons. The clothing of the woman is not in tune with the fashions of Anne Boleyn's time, and the panel is dated between 1572 and 1582. As I mentioned in the start of the video, x-rays also give us information on the supports. The support is the material used to apply the paint on, like canvas, plaster, wood, and other materials. Wood was a popular choice for supports, and in this painting by Sandro Botticelli from 1480, we can see that it's one solid piece of wood with the graining going vertically. This was a popular choice for supports in Italy during the Renaissance. If we compare it to this 1475 Netherlandish painting, which was originally a rectangle, we see that the support was constructed from two planks. Now, here's a different way to use x-rays rather than just on paintings. Fragments of a 12th century manuscript were found in the bindings of a 16th century book. It's not as uncommon as you think, since medieval manuscripts were often cut up and reused between the 15th and 17th centuries. But with this technology, all it takes is a scan to determine if there's a hidden treasure in the bindings of a book. If you'd like to see more on x-rays of paintings, I recommend you watch my Behind the Portrait video of Maria Portinari by Hans Memling, where I discuss all the changes that were made in her portrait. I'll link it below in the description box along with some similar videos. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I also post shorts every week on fashion, life, and art of the Middle Ages and the Renaissance period, so be sure to check those out. And thanks again for watching, and I will see you next time. Thank you.